Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, let's take a look at what's going to be happening going forward because we're in for a, what looks to me like quite a roller coaster ride, aside from the fact that the obvious thing, which is the arrival of cold air. So let's first go through. Let me show you what's happening right now on the surface map. And when I actually these are surface the surface map and I've got the radar echoes overlaid uh, on top of it. Uh, here's the Arctic boundary running back to, uh, just uh, about to Chicago. Uh, northern uh, Missouri uh, goes into uh, southeastern Kansas and then through Oklahoma. And temperatures behind the Arctic boundary are all in the single numbers to low teens this morning. And then ahead of it, you can see they're generally in the uh, upper 20s to mid 30s. And there's a band of snow that has uh, uh, formed a very narrow band across um, south central Indiana and then extends across, I'm sorry, south central Illinois, uh, southeastern Illinois into uh, south central Indiana, then it's into southeastern Kentucky, uh, southeastern Ohio, and then an arm that goes into West Virginia. Now, some of this is probably a light rain, uh, uh, and we have some light snow on the northern fringe. So let me take you through what I, what I think is going to happen, because we're going to have, you know, one system basically always winds up setting up the other. We do have this little weak wave that's going out underneath us, and the GFS keeps the two areas of precipitation separate developing an area of rain to the south, an area of snow to the north that goes across Pennsylvania on a diagonal into New York State. This is light stuff. It's not a big deal. And then we've got uh, the big high coming in behind it. Now, I think there might actually be a second little wave tomorrow night. You can kind of pick it up here with this little light area of precip. And, I, and it's quite possible that there might be a little bit of wet, a little bit of snow um, for parts of Long Island and coastal New Jersey out of this. It's not a big deal. Maybe it whitens the ground and that's about it. And then the core of the cold air bottoms out tomorrow evening into Friday morning. It starts to uh, slowly begin to pull out. Now, this high is going to go out very close to uh, southeastern New England. Uh, you know, it, it might be a little further north or it might just kind of in this pos average position. You've got this low that's coming uh, out of Colorado and you can see there's actually quite a bit of snow uh, that is uh, that develops uh, on the northern edge of a very strong warm front. This warm front is actually pretty supercharged and I just want to take we're going to take a look at that. I'll show you um, you know what exactly is happening here. You've got a lot of warm air that's that's pulling up uh, northward right up in, in here so there's a warm front that's setting up just like this actually it's probably more pinched down somewhat because of how the isobars are and where the high is so the cold air is actually pinching down uh, into uh, the western mountains the North Carolina into uh, western Virginia and West Virginia and that's going to be uh, important because uh, when we move uh, just six hours later by Saturday morning we have uh, some uh, an area of ice, uh, freezing rain uh, for much of interior Virginia and into the western part of Maryland. Now, for central Maryland and into uh, Delaware, there's that's snow, and also into the entire area of southern Pennsylvania, including uh, south central Pennsylvania, as we have a number of watchers. Uh, from South from uh, York, Pennsylvania, that are on SS Storm Chasers. So a big hello to you guys and gals. And you're going to get some snow out of this. Uh, and also, by the way, the snow, and this is for Saturday morning, is already up uh, probably almost to Boston into uh, western New Hampshire, for, and certainly up into Vermont and upstate New York. This is going to be, I think, a pretty good uh, front-end thumping of snow for somebody. I think this warm fronts can produce... I've seen them occasionally produce uh, seven or eight inches in some places, and uh, I don't know, and I'm not, I can't say that that's what's going to happen right now because we're still uh, th three and a half days away. But sometimes when you get these supercharged warm fronts uh, coming out, coming into a departing Arctic air mass, you have a, a really good overrunning setup and a and what we call warm air advection. In other words, warm air advecting from one point to another. And that's exactly what's happening. Uh, we're seeing that um, coming up uh, into the Northeast and into uh, parts of the Great Lakes as well. So this is going to be, I think, 
I think every bit of the there certainly could be six uh, several inches of snow uh, that could accumulate in some areas. And then we uh, get that warmer air to come in. Now, I just want to notice, want you to notice that on the uh, GFS at least, you know what? I'm going to get a little tighter now at this point. Um, and by the way, this could also we're going to go to snow maps as far as the Midwest is concerned. Uh, there could be some decent snows uh, in the mid Midwest out of this because of where the low is tracking. And uh, we'll get a little closer, so we'll take a look at that when we put the snow maps up in just a second. Um, but here we have it on the close-up view. This is 1 o'clock uh, Saturday afternoon. Now, by this time, uh, what's happened is you have already had a changeover to rain along uh, the coastal area. So your warm front's kind of like that. And now you're getting the cold air just gets kind of pinched into Pennsylvania. So this could mean some significant icing for central Pennsylvania, south central PA, uh, and even through parts of uh, northeastern PA and uh, northwestern New Jersey. And it might even extend a little further north than that uh, into uh, the Hudson Valley of New York State. I would not at all be surprised. Uh, and usually the, uh, uh, th these kinds of situations could produce you know, widespread areas of a quarter of an inch of ice. But the good news is that because there is absolutely no blocking, we've go gone from having blocking to uh, now the uh, com a complete opposite because there's no blocking at all, there's nothing to hold the warm front back. So we're going to see this warm front just pretty much uh, come barreling through. There we go. Come on, give me my. There we go. So I can draw my warm front. The warm front's going to pretty much come barreling through uh, late Saturday afternoon. So we'll probably see the. You'll see snow going over to ice, going over to to rain, and then tapering off to to drizzle. And we're going to see also temperatures rise. I think they're probably going to rise through the 40s and might even see some temperatures getting up into the 50s and higher in some places. That's a little tougher call. We'll just have to wait till we get to, to the short range to see how the atmosphere sets up. But I think somebody's going to get into the 50s with this. So now once this happens, you've got the cold front and that's going to be moving through. Um, the, that low just runs up uh, northeastward. But now we have the trailing cold front that approaches the coast by Sunday morning and there's some cold air behind it. Now there's an argument to be made that we could see um, a, a change over to sleet or a little bit of snow before this ends. And I think the, re you know, the reason why is that there's probably uh, going to be some kind of wave somewhere in here, a weak wave that bulges the precip up a little bit. So um, you know, back end changeovers from rain to snow are often tough and mo most of the time they just don't happen. They just shut off. But you know, we'll see what happens. And then after that, it'll just turn cold and dry. Models are, some models are trying to do something uh, with a, a weather system down the road or at least some action uh, off the East Coast and coming out of the Gulf states. You see it there. Who knows, you know, because that, now we're talking about the middle of next week. And I want to get through this warm frontal situation um, first. So let's look at the uh, total snowfalls. And you can take a look what this is going to leave. And let me back it up. And there we go. So you can see that actually it's very generous with four to six inch amounts over much of New, uh, of, uh, New York State, even down northern New Jersey, uh, New York City, western Long Island, western Connecticut, uh, down uh, into uh, east, covering almost all of Pennsylvania. And look, you want to be conservative. Let's call this whole area four to eight and just cut it in half. So, I mean, it certainly could be every bit of two to four, three to five if, if this warm front sets up the way it looks. So I, I think the best way I'm going to word it is to say that we have the potential for several inches. And you can see across uh, the mid, uh, Midwest, Chicago does well with this. Um, you know, Most of uh, Michigan, uh, back through southern Wisconsin, northeastern Iowa, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, Ohio, not too bad. And there's even measurable snows that are, uh, occur down through West Virginia, northern Virginia, around the Washington, D.C. area, through uh, much of interior Maryland has a pretty decent shot of snow here with that warm front so you know this this is going to be interesting to see how uh it, it all plays out uh i'll get you a tighter view so you can uh, get a for the northeast we'll get a little tighter view here and there we go and you can see how this is all playing out so you know it, it actually is fairly generous in terms of snowfall but you want to be conservative as a forecaster you cut i'm just going to mentally cut these numbers in half and say that the potential certainly would be there for several inches of accumulating snow based on what i'm looking at 
on this model run. This GFS model run, by the way, was colder than the prior run. So I want to see if that's a trend. I want to see the European jumps on the same bandwagon. Um, it, it was kind of similar to this. Um, it was a little on the warm side last night, uh, but it was <clears throat> so was the GFS. Now this model's colder. So I think we're going to be playing that game back and forth. You know, if it's the atmosphere is a little bit colder, it'll snow for an extra couple of hours. And that could mean the difference between three inches and five inches or one inch and three inches. Um, so we'll see how it plays. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee dot com, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, ssstormchasers.com. And uh, download my app and subscribe to my forecast. The app is free. The, the uh, subscription is just 99 cents a month. If the, you want forecasts for New York City, Long Island. Connecticut, New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, and the Hudson Valley. Um, that's uh, all zoned out in specific zones. So wherever you live, it kind of comes down to your level area. You get my forecast at least twice a day. You get what I think. You don't get what a computer thinks. You don't get computer icons um, that change every three every three or four hours. You get m what I'm thinking in terms of the lo your local forecast. So have a good day, and we will um, talk to you guys later. I may throw up my Facebook video later on, and I'll throw it up here on YouTube. All right, so have a great, uh, a great day.